I have to admit, it's strange to think that an emissary could be taken down in such a way. I'm sure, the evidence suggests they put up a hell of a fight. But they still got taken. Icons know why. To show they're not as divine as they seem. To be used as a bargaining chip. I don't really know or care. But the people who've taken the emissary have also taken my sister. So, I'm going to need to fight them. That poor pig. They really want everything to have a nice explanation. Scientific. It's strange, really, considering they are the one who believes the icons are all around us at all times. Look, I'm not being disrespectful, of course, to the icons. I just want them to leave me alone. Let me get on with my life. <laughs> Perhaps saving one of their heralds will get me rewarded. Or knowing the icons, probably not. Oh well. This is Red Moon role-playing. You're not quite sure which way to go back. There are multiple paths behind you now. Uh, uh, there's, it's, there's no blood left. She, uh, maybe, maybe the one bleeding was the one sent up the shaft. I, I can't find anything. And do you see me frowning? I'm not really panicking, but I, I somehow feel that it's strange. I, I, I prayed to the traveler. I say that. I, I prayed to the traveler and still I... It's, 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 a, not... it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Let's just continue on. We'll, maybe we'll be able to pick it up later. Peg, just as you're standing there, a monitor in the wall comes to life. It's showing a bulletin show. Oh, you know this one? It's Street Judge. Street judge? Yeah. What the hell? It's about adjudicator Amon Hasra. He solves crime on Coriolis. Do you like that show? Yeah, it's okay. The, I like the suits and the, the idea for, for new weapons that they make up, the fictional ones. This is your favorite episode. No way! Chrysanthemum Red. Yes. Uh, I I look up. <laughs> I, 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 I just stand there and... Guys, do you see this? You do. I frown a little. It's Street Judge. What the hell's a TV screen doing in this random tunnel? I don't know, man. I I, I walk up to it. Uh, I examine the screen. You have seen uh, screens um, as you have moved through the, the corridors, but they've all been turned off. Um, these areas have probably seen more use in the past than they are seeing currently. You move up to investigate, and just as you do that, the monitor goes dark again. Ah, what the hell? And I, 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 it was just gonna go to the best part. I woke up and I, and I, and I try to see what's wrong with it. No, 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 just leave it. It's really not that relevant, is it? And me being a bit desperate to get distracted by something, I, I, I say, I, I don't know. Maybe it's a sign. Maybe it's a sign from the icons. I, I try to examine the screen. You begin examining the screen, and um, Farouk, what are you doing? I actually let them uh, do this, uh, at least for a minute or two, and if it takes too long, I will walk up to them and try to, you know, gently push them away. Carlo, what are you doing? I kind of go up to the screen, and I do then think to myself, maybe there's some connections here I could use. I start looking for a little outlet that maybe I can hook up my tablet to, maybe reorientate ourselves. You begin uh, looking for that. Farouk, then, as you're waiting, you... I mean, when you await for things to happen, it's natural to look around. And 
you do that, and you see something in the dark here. There are lights of various colors in that direction over there. Walls decorated with fanciful drawings. Hmm. I kind of half distracted take a couple of steps that way. While you are not totally sure about these motives, they look distinctly Senethian to you. But it's very inviting. Warm and it's the most human thing you've really seen since you came down here. Someone has basically done illustrations on the wall here, like well, like graffiti, but but much nicer. I I let myself be drawn in a bit and walk. A bit. I try to get a, 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 a view of the entire thing so that I can see what it actually if it, it, is there a story story to it or is there like a warning or something like some kind of message and i let the uh, pig and carlo examine the tv screen remind me do you have culture i do have culture yes and then if you can roll for culture we can see if you can recognize what this is uh, i have i get one success you recognize these as being common illustrations of the ideals of the senethian hegemony and it is, you know, the, the, the power of the Senethians, the enlightenment that they are bringing into the third horizon, the science and, and industry and capitalism and, and all those, those things that the Senethians hold so high. You see, as you're standing here, you, you hear people talking to mysterious figures. A bit over there, it sounds like they're haggling. Like they're doing business. I quickly back off to the others and kind of, you know, poke the one closest to me. And, uh, Pig, you have been working on this monitor now uh, for a while, and you're able to turn it on. But it doesn't show anything. It, it, it's on, though. You fixed it, kind of. I always thought there was people living here. People who don't want to be part of civilization, right, Carlo? That makes sense, doesn't it? Certainly, if you don't want to be noticed, you hang around down here. And I look around. Is Farouk wandered off? Yeah, Farouk has come back now. What did you find? Drawings on the walls and someone over there. I think there are... Someone is trying to buy something? What, in the drawings? No. People talking over there. What? And I bring up my rifle and I look through the night sights. Hmm. The, the two figures there seem to have noticed you now and they, they slip away into the shadows. And you see them moving off. Yeah, probably someone making deals that are best seen, are best not seen by the judicators. This is probably a whole society down here. I frown a little and go shake my head. We got this pig. We got distracted. We were supposed to be. If we can't follow blood anymore, then where the hell are we gonna go now? I don't know. You think the emissary is loose now? I mean, that guy got killed. Maybe he just ran off. Again, I look at the port and see if I can hook my security tablet up and get some information about where we are. As I do this, I remark to the captain, "Hang on, maybe uh, if that's true." As Pig says, maybe there'll be some maintenance reports of something happening nearby. Maybe we can use that as a sort of lead. Let's see. Hmm. Well, you can connect yourself into a, a data port here, into the, the systems in this particular area. Would you like to roll a data gin to see what you can get out? Certainly. One success. What exactly would you like to know? I'm first of all going to see if I can relocate the fault of the fan that was now some time behind us, and then see if there's any other little minor faults being registered or errors in the vicinity. There are a lot of faults around here, actually. There are hundreds. There are things that are being broken constantly down here. You know what's happening here, uh, Carlo. People are scavenging from the station. 
they're pulling out machinery, they're pulling out technology, they're pulling out the things that make this part of the station work. There must be people living here, quite a lot of them, judging by the amount of, of errors that the system is showing. Wonderful, completely useless. I zoom in a little, trying to get maybe some sort of system map. Okay, okay, errors won't help, but... It may be close to this sanatorium, the the real sanatorium. That's going to need space. Where's the nearest area nearby that looks like it could contain more than just a tunnel? Like, a sort of a larger area, if you will. Well, there is a slightly bigger area right in the, um, in, the in the vicinity of those those drawings that, that Farouk just described. Something big seems to be behind... Yes, there's a door there. Captain, these pictures, did you notice that there was a door behind them, or that they were drawn on a door? Uh, No, sorry, I was... I guess I was... I I, I was looking too much at the... the meaning of them. (laughs) And what's that? It it describes the Senethian hegemony, and... Yeah. Their excellence, I guess. I raise an eyebrow and chuckle slightly and go, Well, yes, they are known for their excellence. <laughs> um, well, that shouldn't be the way that they'd be taking someone who... I mean, if, it's, if, 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 if we're talking about the Order of the Pariah, they wouldn't want to be in a place where there's just a bunch of Sinithians. But uh, maybe the, the drawings... Maybe someone's seen something. If if we can find someone to talk to, that's the closest area I can tell that might actually, if it was going to have people, would have people. We've lost our trail. I say, let's see if we can find out something about this sanatorium. At least that might be where they were heading. So I've just sent a, a map of uh, Corolla's station so that you can locate where you are, and you are right close to what's here described as the slummer's domain and what is colloquially known as the third sphere i relay this as this comes up remarking we've come quite a way down but there you go here's where we are and surely surely we've been following for so bloody long we must be close let's let's try investigating this place sure i mean yeah carl is yours captain of course we are sure they had gone further down. I see we're not that far from loading ducks. What if they try to get them off the station? Well, we followed it way past them, Captain. Look, see, loading docks are there, and I point and I go down and down again. See, look, I think we're here. Slammer's domain. Yeah, let's go on then. I'll lead the way to this door, and I'll look at the door and see if I can see how to open it. Yes, and Carlo, as you uh, are close to the door, you, of course, recognize these motifs on the walls. Yes, they are very typical Sinithian uh, illustrations. You see them in schools. You were surrounded by that when you uh, went to the academy. I smile a little and think to myself that, yes, even with my complete lack of cultural knowledge, I recognize these. Hard to miss them. But I don't say anything. Pig, you've seen stuff like this before. You immediately get a, a kind of bad feeling in your stomach. Yeah. Okay. We, uh, I I kind of reluctantly put my rifle back uh, over my shoulder again. Just uh, you uh, you want to take the lead, then you bastard. Well, keep in mind, both of you. I have a very funny feeling that these guys aren't actually going to be nobles and Ephian houses down here. It's probably a joke, or a mockery, or maybe something to do with some criminal element. I don't know, let's go and find out. Yeah, I'll take the lead, and maybe it's best if we all pretend to be, you know, low lives. <laughs> yeah, sure. I look at uh, Farouk, and I try to uh, say somewhat comfortingly, but it just sounds stupid. Yeah, it's... So probably the, 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 he broke free and he's back up again. He's, he's going to make his way back. He was quite capable and stuff. Mm, I'm not sure he's conscious. It might have just been 
well, um, temporarily, you know, breaking out of it for a while, and then... I don't, I don't know, but it just feels, it just feels like that was what happened. You are sure that that is exactly what happened? It, it's probably still in danger. Okay, okay, yeah, well, let's go on then. I try to open the door and lead the way. Well, the door is locked, will you knock it? I frown a little as I see it's locked, and I remark to Pig, well, there's two ways about this pig. I can try and open it (laughs) subtly, or we can knock. What do you say, Captain? Do you have the tools for breaking the lock? Yes. Then please do. The less less people that are aware of our presence, the better, I believe. I quickly reach into my coat, taking out my mechanical lockpick, and see if I can get this door open. No successes. Do you wish to pray to the icons? No. I kind of start, and... Yes, no, I start trying to open this door with my mechanical lockpick. You do, and it does not go well. And you you hear this deep metallic clank that comes from uh, your attempts at opening this door. But it has an impact, though. It has effect, because you can feel the door beginning to be opened. The door uh, is opened, and it's opened inward, and you can see two figures on the other side. They're wiry but muscular women with pale, chapped skin and their hair in tight, oiled knots. Both are armed with makeshift spears made from duralite plates and pipes. Farouk... Something tells you that these two are humanites. Tail, perhaps, from Erai, close to Sadal. You know that many of them were sent as unskilled labor to build a station, and then, well, conveniently forgotten about because they weren't needed anymore. Most people view them as dirty subhuman anyway, and biosculpted as they are. I smile very quickly uh, and deftly, placing that lockpick back on my person as I sort of hold my hands up and go, Ah! Sorry, uh, door wasn't working like it normally does. Hi, hello. They um, look at you uh, curiously, but uh, seem to drop any suspicion. This is the third sphere. What's your business here? Do you have something to trade with? Or have you come to offer your services and loyalty to the queen? I smile and then sort of take a step back, sort of looking to Farouk. Greetings. Uh, we are we are on a mission and seek knowledge. Maybe you can help us. Perhaps the queen can. She wishes to see all the newcomers, and she knows she knows many things, a great many things. Of course, we do not wish any disrespect to your queen, but we are in a hurry and pressed for time. Uh, is there any way you can dis- extend our? our best wishes to her and just help us on our way. I'm afraid if you wish to enter this third sphere, you must meet with the queen. But you're free to to not come in here if you would like that. <clears throat> um, have you seen anything like a group of soldiers passing by? I look at these two uh, women, eyeing them suspiciously, not really sure what to make of them. Our queen says that information is valuable. We are looking for these soldiers, and if they haven't passed through your sphere, uh, then there should be no reason for us to intrude. They just smile and uh, seemingly await your decision on what you want to do. I turn to my friends and kind of throw out my hands in a... I tilt my head a little, remarking to the captain... Uh, typical of these subhumans. It's all weird riddles and strange games. I'll tell you what, how about we do it this way? I go up to one smile. 
Right, so how about this? Information has a price. We'd be very happy to pay a price, but we obviously need to know if the information's even there. I ask you to buy a gun, and you don't have the gun. Well, that's not very fair trade, is it? So how about you very quickly, however you can, ask your queen, is this information available? And then we can decide if we trade or not. Well, the only way to find out is to ask her yourself. And Pig, he just said subhuman, as if it was a very natural thing to do. You're biosculpted too. Yeah. I'm, I'm not really sure what to make of it, because... I don't get what he means by it. I don't think I have... I, I, it was Farouk that recognized them as humanites, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I'm one of those who are wondering if humanites actually have a soul. Because I'm not really humanite, I'm just biosculpted, right? It's a difference, right? Yeah, but you are looked down upon in, in much the same way as they are in terms of the biosculpt that you have. You have taken a reputation loss specifically because of that, for example. It is the same kind of hatred. What did he say again? He said subhumans. It's a very Senethian thing to say. It's very much in character. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Senethian bastard. I just m m mutter under my breath. I just sigh and shake my head. Very well, let's talk to your queen. They make a sort of an invitational kind of move with their arms as if, yes, please come in. We will need to take your weapons, of course. You understand, we don't want to have any trouble in here and they point to their spears and to your well to your accelerator rifle and Vulcan pistol and all the other high technological weapons that you have oh I know I'm not I'm not I'm not letting you have this uh captain then you're not coming in I'm a, I'm a wait here captain you go talk to that queen hmm. are you sure will you be okay well, I could hold on. I, I could, I could guard our stuff for now, I guess. Yeah. Carlo, what do you say? I think I better come with you, Captain. Wouldn't be good for me to leave you alone with these lovely people. Then, of course, yes, Danan, you can, you can stay here, and I think that's a really good decision, actually. Just be careful, okay? So then you give your weapons to Pig. Uh, and they uh, will hold on to them, and the guards seem to not have an issue with that. The issue seems to be about bringing weapons to the queen. And if you're not doing that, then they have no issue with where you place them. Uh, you get the feeling that there is trade going on here. They, these uh, people haggling, you now have a feeling that they must probably have come either directly from here or be connected to this place somehow. So it's not a place that's... Uh, against having visitors. It's probably more about making sure that, well, things don't go bad inside. Um, and so, they begin leading you through uh, a colorful hall on the other side of the door. And the ceiling in this hall is almost as high as on some of the floors in the spire. It just lacks the hollow screens of its civilized counterpart. The, the ceiling is black, and the glittering rivet heads form squares rather than star constellations as above. The hall leads into a very, very large room, and they, they keep leading you through this room. It's got cables with multicolored lights crisscrossing the room, supported by pillars that rise like trees among the tents that cover the floor. Tents made from cardboard, old blankets, plastic trash, and old dura plates. You can hear marketplace noises from the center of this, well, village, for that is what it is. You see people, many looking like the humanites you just met. A group of children looking at you with curiosity in their eyes. Uh, Farouk, you see that they look scrawny and small, as if they aren't getting enough to eat. As I look around, again, I don't think earlier I would have recognized them as humanites. I might not actually know that much myself, but I think I recognize that they just didn't look to me Zenithian stock. But does that seem to carry on with all these children and people I see everywhere? It's a mix of people, actually. Not all humanites. There's, there's a lot of them, but there, there's also people who look like they are perhaps Zenithian or would claim to be. 
people who look like they would be first comers. Um, it's a mix of, of people who have probably lost whatever place in society they had uh, and have been forced to come here or... I remarked to one of the guards, so what's the deal with the pictures on the door? It's a bit of a strange symbol to use for your... your world here. The hierarchy of the Zenithian hegemony. Oh. It is our queen that have commissioned them from uh, some of the artists that we have here. She, um, she says that it is symbols from, from her from her people, from her culture, that she wishes to spread onto us. She takes good care of us. I raise an eyebrow, and as we're led along, I remark to Farouk, that's a very interesting thing to say. What? Do you don't think there would be Zenithians down here? Not just Zenithian, but someone... Her uh, Zenithian hegemony? Ruling as a queen down here? Not everyone's strives for a throne upstairs. They don't often get a choice, Captain. You know that better than I do. I'm sure. I smile. Anyways, Carlo, I think I've seen the underside of things before, but this, I had no idea it even existed. I have to admit, I kind of feel pigs missing out here. Yes. It's so... it's so alive. So vibrant. Yes, you see this market that you're now passing through where merchants and slummers have gathered in what for you might look like a pathetic parody of the markets that are held up in the ring or at the core. But the slummers here have placed their wares on damp blankets lined up along the cold metal floor. Mostly the goods that are offered are random spare parts, trinkets, and cigarette butts. You notice no food, unless something that stands out to you. There's also a small group of artists that are showing off and are selling their creations that are built out of, uh, well, whatever scarce materials they must have been able to find here in the station's belly. Cables, metal debris, or packaging materials. And they have also put out their wares there and are, are sort of having a... Yes, an exhibit uh, for the people who are visiting this this market. We are almost there, they uh, they say, and they uh, continue leading you on. Wonderful, lead the way. I make a mental note of all of this. It is actually quite interesting to me. Sure, these people have nothing, but well, they seem to actually be trying to make something of themselves. I can respect that, even if they're first comers. Although, again, there are some Zenithians down here. I guess technically I'm down here as well, but it does make me think that any Zenithian who'd be down here probably doesn't want it to be known. And they lead you onto what is four tent pavilions. At some point, these must have been colorful and beautiful, but uh, years of tabak, arash, and opor smoke have turned them yellow and the countless tears in the fabric have been fixed with copper wire that uh, you believe must have been harvested from around the cellar. This is our queen's tents, and they point uh, for you to to move up. The tents are at the center of the village, and standing out from the surrounding tents that are in much worse condition. And those tents are primarily built from uh, odds and ends that have been scavenged uh, from the surroundings. Uh, More armed slummers are... uh, showing up as you approach behind you, blocking your way back to the door you came from. You notice. I lean over to uh, Carlo. Then again, calling yourself queen over these sad souls. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's someone interested in us weird sense of power and oppression we should probably be on our guard we certainly should but I frown a little as of course something occurs to me but I'm sure it will be fine there's no way she, this person could know anything hmm let's be careful I think to myself as I let Farouk first enter, but sort of stay close behind. You are presented to the queen. 
She's wearing an impressive, slightly outdated, hegemonistic ball gown. Her oiled hair is woven into a hat with golden embroidery. She's wearing perfect makeup and her presence exudes cruelty and power. Slithering around her is a large bionic cobra. And behind her stands a Nekatra, a guard. It's fur black with streaks of grey. It's naked except for a bandolier with bottles and bags. It shows its teeth to you as you approach. I stop dead in my tracks. I get panicked. And I try to re- uh, press it down, but it's kind of when my hand goes up to my face and looking for the scar that used to be there, you know, I kind of involuntarily take two steps back. I sort of step forward to give Farouk a little cover. My finger does ever so slightly twitch where I would normally have my Vulcan cricket, but I understand what I'm seeing. This person definitely wants to show their power. Definitely wants to appear threatening. It's a good display. But the best thing to do in these situations is not let it be shown. And I just smile, step forward, and do a little cordial bow. A bow that would be reserved for Zenithian nobility, greeting of a Zenithian nobility, or at least someone who knew those sort of manoeuvres anyway. She responds in kind perfectly, uh, in a way that only a person who has had the proper training could. She is the real deal. She is Zenithian nobility. What is she doing here? She begins to speak with a kind of sneer on her face, moving her hands in, in soft circles. Welcome to my court. Shall we dispense with the formalities? Uh, they, they are a fond reminder of my past, she says and smiles at you. But they do bore me, so... I am Queen Elmeda, Elmeda Dolparnaso. Why are you here? That surname. Yes. Do I recognize it? How much do you think you would know about the dynasties in the monolith? Would you be fairly familiar with them, you would say? I would say I would know at least what I should have been told. Whether or not I listened all the time is another question, but I definitely would have known every single family of any importance anyway. Hmm. Well, then you know that she is the first countess of the Parnasso dynasty. Um, She disappeared in uh, cycle 57. Uh, The rumor was that she had been kidnapped. There was a big scandal. She was uh, betrothed to um, a man named... Vasilev Zarif Konstantinides, but he broke off the engagement looking for someone, well, more powerful, and uh, after that she disappeared. Hmm. Very interesting. Yes, I do know the name Konstantinides, that is one of the core families of the, well, the hegemonists of the, the hegemony, as opposed to the neo Zenithians. Very interesting. I smile. Great queen, what a pleasure to meet someone of your stature down here of all places. And you, I see that you, we come from a similar place, I gather. Who might you be? My name is Carlo Salah, and I confess while I do come from Kua, I have never been... In such esteemed company as yourself, I am certainly not... <laughs> I maybe serve the families, but I am not one of them. Well, you... Well, you fake it well in that case, she says and smiles. I have... I've had practice. Uh, Captain Farouk, this is a very important lady. I believe the rumours were that you were to be re- wed to a certain individual of the families, and then you were kidnapped. It was quite tragic, really, everything that happened. With every fall comes a chance to rise again, and that is what I have done here, and what I will continue to do. I will be back in the monolith one day. I can tell you that much, Carlos Salah. But every journey has its steps, and my journey is currently here, in the cellar. I have to admit, 
I imagine your story is fascinating. However, I'm sure it comes with a price, and maybe today we're only here for one particular thing. Uh, Captain Farouk, my employer. Kind of been transfixed by this Nikatra this entire time, still with my hand to my face. And I... She notices this, that you are transfixed on the Nikatra. Oh, this is Frax. He is uh, head of my guard. Um, I bow uh, deeply, and uh, the icon's grace on upon you, Queen Elmeda. Um, we seek information and are hoping that you can help us. Then Akatra nods to you as you say that as well, cordially. Oh, information, you say. I think to myself it's slightly unnerving seeing one of them so placid, but then of course, even though I've not really encountered them much beyond the Gazalis, I do recall that actually normally they are supposed to have some actual intelligence beyond bestial is that right yes i mean they are semi-intelligences but uh the ones that you met on the ghazali they were very much bred and trained for war and war alone they were completely feral they did not even attempt uh, to communicate with you in any kind of way but you know that uh in fact the nekatra can communicate they can even speak zeni um but Maybe not so well, um, but they uh, can do tasks like this. Be a guard, for example. Um, work in, in mines or um, do those kinds of things. They they are used as labor uh, in, in parts of of the horizon. Um, usually not treated so well, but they are very, very strong. Absolutely fascinating. I think to myself as I remain silent. I, I'm unsure whether we have anything of interest for you, but of course we are willing to trade if that is your interest. Well, if you wish information, you can ask your question and I can tell you the price of the information because, well, as you understand everything, everything has a price. I smile and say to Farouk, well, I have a question, Captain, but maybe you can go first. No, no, go ahead. Do you know... Where the real sanatorium lies. I know that the real sanatorium is a place that lies beyond the cemetery, beyond the labyrinth, and even beyond that. I know where that place is. Indeed. And you seem like decent people, and I I would really like to help you. I don't particularly approve of all these comings and goings that are happening. Uh, moving through my domain and doing something that does not seem to be sanctioned by the authorities uh, upstairs. I do not wish to incur the wrath of the guard in any way. So yes, I would indeed be able to provide you with with that information. But um, you know what I'm going to say next. Of course. But let me add that, just so it's clear... That is indeed our only interest in your realm, and here in the cellar, to be honest with you, we're simply people who would really, really like to talk to the people at the sanatorium, and then be out of your way. Hmm. That sounds... that sounds excellent. That sounds much, much excellent. And uh, I must say that you do seem to be people of action. Uh, My guards tell me that you came quite heavily armed, and that fits quite perfectly into some specific needs that I have right now. Uh, May we speak plainly? I raise an eyebrow. Of course. She shoes away the the servants that she also had here, and the cobra hisses behind her as she does that. The Nakatra guard remains with her, though. We mostly run things down here in the third sphere. I try to take care of my people. We can't exactly grow anything here, so we are dependent on scavenging and trade. But we're not alone. Are you familiar with the Scavara? Thurman? I snort a little, perhaps being vaguely aware of them, but I will remark, I know of that species, but I have really... I can't say I know them, no. No, nasty, dirty animals, really. They call them semi-intelligences for a reason, and, uh... As she says that, the, the cobra snaps in the air demonstratively, and then a cotra mm, sort of looks at her a little bit as she says that. 
They, uh, you know the Skavara, they, they look slightly like a badger or a hyena, something like that. Um, they are usually found doing menial jobs of, of different kind, uh, different kinds. And they are, are not sort of powerful in the same way that the Nakotra are, but they are, they, they are skilled with their paws. And, and they can, um, yeah, they can, they can be good servants to, uh, to uh, humans, and that's how they have been used. And probably they must have been utilized in the in the construction of the Coriolis station. Um, so, I can't really stand them, she says. But the buggers are entrepreneurial. They find what we don't, and um, we are, how shall I put it? We're losing market share. All right. I said I would speak plainly, so I'm going to speak plainly. We're starving. I've been forced to cut down on rations for anyone except for the ones who are out scavenging. And this situation is not sustainable. We will perish here if nothing is done. Uh, Farouk, you see that she is genuine in saying this. And it matches with what you saw in the village. They do, indeed, look like they're about to perish. So... I need someone to eliminate the competition, so that we can feed our children. Do your dirty work? If you would like to look at it that, like that. There is a Skavara named All. She is the, the one who leads their group, the most ingenious of them, and the one that has resisted our previous attempts at chasing them off, or bribing them, or mm, getting them to share what they're taking in. More Nekatra than Skavara, she says. Feral creature, the... That one. And the Nekatra guard looks at her as she negatively compares the Skavara with the Nekatra. He's pulling his bony fingers and fixing his burning eyes on her. I frown a little as I remark, my queen, that's wonderful and everything, but I find myself wondering, is that equal price to you giving us a location. I kind of feel we might need a little more if we're going to go and assassinate people and, oh, I don't know, have to deal with a whole hive or herd or whatever they travel around in. What I would give you is a guide to get you through the labyrinth and you will need that because in the labyrinth is the beast and the beast will consume you. And there are also those oh, groups of, uh, of slummers that move around there. They're not with us. They are quite far gone. They will kill anyone they find. And there's many of them. But uh, my guide can uh, help you get around them. And I also have information about this base, this sanatorium, that I can share with you. So yes, I can offer many things, but what I need in return is, for all, the head of this snake, so to speak. For all to be eliminated. If you bring her head, I will give you what you need. If we find another solution to this problem, would that be acceptable? If you can find another solution, that means that they leave us uh, and, and don't take what is ours, then uh, of course. I only wish to feed my people. I am not a cruel person. I, I don't care about the Skavara if not for the fact that that she is killing my people, my children. Very well. What do you say, Carlo? No, oh, Captain, if you're alright with it, I'm fine with it. The only question is, how the hell are we gonna do it? And do we have the time? I would like to send Frax here with you. He's our most capable warrior. I, tr I trust him, and well, it would improve your chances regardless. Frax sort of snarls. I'm sorry, but I am... Um, I have bad experience with the... Uh, his kind. Well, if you wish to have what I can offer, I do insist on him. At least following you. I must see what goes on, you see. I, I must verify. Trust, but verify, they say. Now, now, Captain, the more the merrier. Carlo... I don't think we have a choice, Captain, just saying. One step out of line, and your guard will be no more. Because I won't hesitate. Neither would he, but 
But he is here to serve and he's here to help you achieve your goal, you see. He is your friend. Frax barks at that. So what say you? Do we have a deal? Yes, we have a deal. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we play the campaign Mercy of the Icons for Coriolis, which is published by Free League. Joining us in the role of Farouk was our dear friend Jenny Jungeval. The music was created by Alpha Zone and Sabled Sun, and was used with permission from their label Cryochamber. Please check out cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for more of their lovely dark ambient. We also used the official Coriolis soundtrack by Stars on a Black Sea. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Hoyshaubert, Simon Cooper, David, Julia, Camilla, Bob Lange, Cameron, Anton, Graham Barry, Doug Thompson, and Lily for their generous support. And we would of course also like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, this show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult of Indeed Lost, Call of Duty, and Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay there, as well as binge the rest of Emissary Lost. You can also get early and raw access to all of our recordings, and hear your name read on the show as a champion of the Red Moon as well as even play some cult with us. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. Thank you again for listening, and remember that the song leads us to the truth under a great winged shadow.